Are you new to digital DJing with a laptop and you're concerned that your software might not be optimized or you're intimidated by all the different preferences? Make sure you stay tuned and I will show you what I think are the most important settings and preferences to set up your system properly so you have a worry-free and killer show. Hey guys, I'm DJ Contour and I'm super happy to have you in the studio with me today. This will be the first video in my course of DJing for beginners. What we're going to go over today in this tutorial is how to optimize your software with what I think are the most important settings that way you don't have any failures or mistakes in your set. So let's go down and take a look at the computer screen and I'll give you my rundown on what I think is the best. Okay guys, now that we're down into the computer, let's open up an instance of Tractor. This is going to be the DJ software that I'll be using, but 90% of them are pretty much exactly the same um, with similar settings and preferences. Um, in order to get into the preferences, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can come over here and click this little gear, and that'll take you right in there. Or you can come up here, for those of you who are new to software use on MacBooks or laptops or anything, you can come up and it'll either be the file or the Tractor. Um, preferences up in the top left corner and then you go down to preferences and then also if you're into shortcuts you can hit command comma so we're gonna start up here with our audio setup um, you can see here that I'm on my audio interface that's just because I'm using the microphone if you're plugged into a controller there will be an option to connect to that specific controller whether it be a tractor s2 or if you're in pioneer it'll be some type of DDJ or anything like that um, so the first thing we're going to deal with is getting your latency down um, this is pretty important because if you are in fact using a controller the latency is actually the time from when you press a button to when the software actually does something so the main goal is to get at least under 20 if you can um, and if you're more of a controllerist you want to be closer to the 10 mark um, where I do a little bit of mixing with my remix deck and things like that which we'll get into with another video um, I'm closer down to the 10 mark uh, because I'm doing a little more technical things. Um, but as long as you're under that 20 mark, you're good. So say we're up here, you open it up and you're at 64 and a half milliseconds, you're going to want to grab this little yellow bar here and slowly bring it down until you get yourself under that 20 mark. Um, the lower you are, it might be a little more CPU intensive depending on what kind of computer you're running, um, but it shouldn't make that huge of a difference. Um, I like mine right around that 13 mark. I don't want to go too low, um, but that's usually where I keep it. As long as you're in between that 10 and 20 millisecond mark, you should be good. And then we are going to go down to the loading spot for our next one. There's a couple important ones in here. Um, this first one right here, is very crucial I think. Uh, it, I believe it comes off as a default because I also recall failing to use this in my earlier sets when I was a beginner. So what this is, it says loading only into a stopped deck. You're going to want that on and what that's going to do is it's going to prevent you from loading a track into a playing deck. We've all done it. Everyone's had a set where they're in the mood and they're feeling it and then they load up the next song and they hit the wrong load button and then all of a sudden the track stops because it's loading up a new one. This will prevent that from happening. The next one in the list is stop playback at the end of track. This, in my opinion, is a personal preference. What will happen is if my track, whatever I'm playing, ends, the deck will stop playing. And I personally prefer that just for the way I DJ. It's just how I've always done it. But for some, it might be good because if you're a beginner, you might run out of time when somebody might be giving you a request or something like that, and the track stops. But it will actually keep playing, playing and playing and playing. So what you can actually do is you can take your track search bar or your skip or your loop encoder or whatever you have on your specific controller and you can actually scroll backwards into the song in real time and then it'll actually keep the song playing long enough for you to grab a loop so you can find something so I prefer to have that off just because I always mix out within a minute or two minutes um, or I usually grab a, a loop before I get down to that point and then another one down here is initially load to cue marker and what that's gonna do is that's going to 
load where the song starts to the first cue point. So um, when Tractor analyzes a song, it actually places the first cue point for you as a load point. And you're going to want it on there. That way you don't have to do any adjusting when you are trying to start your song. Where, say, you're you're doing a really fast mix, you're not going to want to be trying to line up the software on the very first beat, where this will initially put it on the beat. The um, activate fade in and fade out markers is pretty nice too, and you can set that up to whatever you want, where um, if you set it up as a fade in or fade out marker, the screen will flash and say, hey, it's time for you to get ready to mix the new song in or out, which is pretty nice if you go through and analyze the songs that specific way. Um, and then down here are pretty important too. You're going to want both of these off, and basically these say the same thing on the loading deck and the mixer. Um, reset all controls when loading track. And basically what that will do if it's engaged is when you put a new song on, it brings all of these settings back to the factory default, which you might not want because if you have your volume fader down preparing to fade a track in at a low volume or say you cut the bass out for an initial bass swap, it's going to reset all of that, so you'll be playing the full loud track over the next track, and then you're going to get a really, really muddied mix, and you don't want any of that. Um, so then we're going to go down to, let me see here, transport. Um, you're going to want to come down here to the tempo and beat sync option. I personally, again, this is a personal preference, I like the tempo sync, um, where beat sync, if you click that on, when the track is playing and you have sync on to another track, it's definite. So it cannot be moved or it cannot be altered. Where I like the tempo sync because it can be altered. So if you spin the jog wheel or um, change the tempo fader, you, you can potentially alter where it's at. Um, I personally like that because I have a couple tracks that are all transitions or things like that to where I might need to vary the phase um, where if you're just syncing two songs that are in the same beat and same phase you'll want to have the beat sync on um, especially for a beginner I feel like the beat sync would be more um, plausible for you to learn and then you could potentially switch over to tempo sync once you start figuring out your own um, style and everything like that and then let me see where we need to go down here we're gonna go into mixer there's a couple nice ones down here as well. The Tractor software has a built-in limiter and a built-in auto gain. So what's really nice is if you have different genre tracks or produced by different people where they have different gain levels, you're going to want to click auto gain because what that's going to do is it's going to average out everything to make it a more even gain level. That way you're not clipping or you don't have to crank the gain knob on your controller to get the track sounding the same um, and then it also has the built-in limiter here which is nice where if one is too loud or you crank the master way up it's going to compress all the audio signals to make it more manageable that way you're not blowing the speakers out of whatever you're playing through don't mind my phone over there i apologize about that and then down here are all of your controller options where say you start off with a basic mixer, which I'm going to assume you do. If you're starting with the Tractor S2, which is the most beginner, but it's still a very nice mixer, I'll show you this as well. This is my own personal preference. There is a gain knob up in the very top, and I prefer to have that as a filter, where you can have that as just to turn the gain up, where if you hit the shift key, it alternates. So I have it set up for the filter, so I don't have to press two buttons to filter out part of the track, which is great. Um, and I also don't have to use extra effects, where I can just hit one knob and change it. Where you might be more into um, fine-tuning the exact volume of your track, and then the filter will be the automated one with the shift. That's up to you guys. Once again, another personal preference. I personally like that. Um, but those, in my opinion, are the most important settings. That way you don't end up either loading a track into the wrong deck, uh, and that way the latency is proper so you're not hitting buttons and it's not doing the wrong thing at the wrong time or lagging. Um, other than that, everything else you could kind of play with in your controller settings or your analyze options, things like that. Um, that's something you can play around with. Um, these are just, once again, I think the most important ones.
And there you have it, guys. It's as simple as going into the preferences and finding the most important ones that'll suit your needs to set up your software and get it optimized. I really appreciate you guys coming over to my channel and viewing this. Uh, it means a lot. And I really hope that it helped you guys get your software set up to the point where you're comfortable with it and you know what it's going to do now. Make sure you go down, hit the like and the subscribe. That way, every time I post new information, you guys will get it right on your phones or your computers and you won't miss anything. Make sure to come back and I'll see you next time.